Today we're going to talk about a few of the pieces of the systems exhibition at the Swan Coach House Gallery. The two stunning pieces on the wall here are by Amy Laurel Esslinger, and they're made from layers and layers of paper, paint, wood, and a bunch of other stuff. The one we're looking at now is called Overlap, and if this looks like something out of your biology textbook, well, it is. Most of her work focuses on biological and environmental systems, which is why I guess we're calling this systems, but I'll touch on that later. Look at the richness of color and complexity of texture here. Esslinger is absolutely manic in her attention to detail. You can also see that in the other work we saw as we walked in, which we're moving over to now, it's called Virus Family, and you can see how well the reds and oranges complement the colors and overlap. Those spiraling viruses are like bees around a hive or the black hole of a galaxy or any number of bizarre and hidden universes. That's why the title systems and the description you see as you come in kind of fall short. You get the usual art speak. The work, quote, acknowledges an order that accepts chaos, subjectivity, and uncertainty, blah, blah, blah. But that's so limiting. Just look at this. You need poetry, not jargon, to talk about this work. Now, the next piece we're moving to is by the other artist in the show, Laurel Peterson. It's got those same reds and oranges as Virus Family, and it also appears to be made by someone with some serious OCD. This piece is called Ready Made Grid, and what she's done here is taken cardboard packaging from consumer products like the toothpaste box we're seeing here, and she's cut them into thousands of strips and woven those together. It's like a giant version of a kid pot holder, so although the artist, and again I'm quoting from the exhibition description, explodes, explores how art can decode and or create networks based on our natural and social worlds, well, how fun is this? There's a mad kid joy in this work. You wonder how the whole thing holds together, and here you can see maybe not so well. And you also wonder, like those viruses we just saw, how much we fail to see and how little we value the things that come into our lives. Peterson makes this last point about how we value or fail to value everyday objects pretty clear in the sculpture we're seeing here. It's called Imaginary Object Number 35. This is a moving, really poignant piece. It's composed of those precious, strange, fragile pieces that cobble together a life and that disappear that we throw away when we don't need them anymore. This piece is really the heart of the show for me. And as we look at the rest of Peterson's collected and meticulously cataloged trash, we start to see it as strangely beautiful. Just don't trip on it. <laughs>